and I fell asleep. And I'll never forget, I woke. I already know how that's about to go. The pastor sitting in his face. You think you can sleep in the Lord's house? It's like, we've been up all day. Why are you so spazzed out? You know, the Lord designed all of us and resting is a part of us, right? So you're crashing out on me for doing something that he designed in my body. <laughs> like. Okay. I didn't want to do Gordon. Nah, Terry Crews. Terry Crews. It's more recent. I like it. All right, come on. This video is Terry Crews eats his last meal by Mythical Kitchen. This is my last meal. Woo! He's like, yeah, actually, you will not be leaving today. Ooh, hold on. What, 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 what we got here? I love food. Yeah, I can watch this all day. Ribs. Yep. What is that? What is that? Beans? Collard greens? I don't know what that is. What is that? Like that Caesar salad? Garlic bread? Okay. Wings? Don't know what that is. Don't I can't really tell what this is either. Fish? Maybe orange chicken? I can't really tell. Is that another salad? I don't know what that is. Might be sushi. I can't tell. Steak, baked potato, broccoli, burger, fries, milkshake, four different types of like smoothies. I'm guessing he's gonna cook all of them. Every person has exactly two things in common. We all gotta eat and we're all gonna die. Today's guest is actor, author, and former NFL linebacker. Damn. Yeah. We all gotta eat and we all gonna die. You can catch him in the new movie, The Killer's Game. You can also see him on the America's Got Talent season finale. Terry Crews. Watch welcome. FNAF VHC, VHS tapes, paranormal investigation. Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll check it out. The show. No, oh, what's up, my man? Probably not this stream though, because I already got like a set amount of videos. But I will check it out in next year. I'll make sure to put it on the list for next. How you show. doing, Josh? Good to see you. Likewise, man. Uh, there were too many things to fit in the intro. You're also a furniture designer. Yes. You're also a painter. Uh, you threw hammer with former American record holder Lance Steele. <laughs> you are the best damn courtroom sketch artist the WJRT Channel 12 in Flint, Michigan ever saw. Whoa, you went way back. <laughs> You really went into the, the annals of my history, man. This is good. I've been trying to figure out what makes all of the man that is Terry Crews, and there is so much there. You've really been making the most of the one life you got. Oh, dude, I just do what I love, man. Mm -hmm. I learned that a long time ago because, you know, coming up in Flint, Michigan, you were kind of, you, you either worked at the factory or you didn't. And so I was like, man, I got it. I can't do this for, you know, I can't be stuck over there. So I just said, I have to do as many things as I can possibly do. Whatever I love, I decided I was gonna do. Uh, have you thought about your last meal before? No, I never did. Um, but, you know, once I knew I was coming on this, I actually, there were so many choices. I, was, I, I think I gave you guys- I'm trying to think, what would my last meal be? What, 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 was, what would y'all last meal be? I'm trying to think. What, what's something that would go in the list? Offer it, just off the top of my head. Ribs, mac and cheese, pizza, Italian salad, garlic bread, key lime pie. No, not key lime pie. Just it's this pie that my grandma makes. But yeah. Um, Hmm. Hmm. Burger. Like a cheeseburger or whatever. Five Guys Burger, by the way. I already said pizza, I'm pretty sure. Wings. Cinnamon rolls. Oh my goodness, yes. And then one more.
What's something else I really love to eat? Mozzarella sticks, I guess. Or chicken Alfredo. Or Wegmans. Not Wegmans. Walgreens. No, Wegmans. Wegmans Sushi. And then drinks would be vanilla milkshake, cookies and cream milkshake, a root beer float, water, like three cups of water, and then like pineapple Fanta. Like five or six. Certified. Um, because... What can I say? I can't imagine just having one last meal. I just can't. It's yeah. like it would have to be a whole like cornucopia of everything. You know what I'm saying? Dave, we have a cornucopia of literally everything that you asked for. We are putting together the largest last meals in history, and it's just you and me, and we got to take it all down, man. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. We, That's we can die fine. Tomorrow, I like right? this. I like it? We yeah. might, and we might. <laughs> like, I can talk today. about food all day. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Terry, so for the first of first. six courses today, we have the creamy rock shrimp. This is tempura fried, a little bit of a spicy mayonnaise with yuzu in there. We have the spicy tuna on crispy rice. We Ooh. have miso, black cod, and then we have a simple salad with Ooh. a little bit of edamame, and some citrus yeah. and fennel in there. Man, this please lead. dig in and oh. dig in. tell me all about the it. Shrimp okay, look. man, listen, oh. I've been waiting for this. Like, okay, I gotta start with my creamy rock. Listen, first of all, you gotta understand the thing about this meal. This is my Nobu special, mm -hmm. right? And I would go to New York and I would be like, oh, one day I'll be able to go to Nobu. And, and then once things started to really click for me, um, and I'll never forget, uh, my wife and I were in, in New York and it was a little bit after White Chicks really started to take off. And what was so <laughs> nuts is that I remember they played my scene in the car with Marlon Mm -hmm. in, in Times Square. And we were flipping out. Oh, thank you. I'm going to grab, yeah, grab, grab a couple of these. Thank <laughs> Go you. for it, man. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> we got more in back, too, Terry. Don't oh. hold back here. Oh. In. And, we actually um, got about like 30 more in the back just for the for the team. It's like, oh, no, you go ahead. Bring the rest. <laughs> I told my I wife, mm -hmm. we went to Nobu, and they knew who I was. And then they escorted me up the stairs, and I had my table, and this was the meal that I had. Man. And I always have this meal. You mentioned growing up in Flint, hey. you were a part of the Greater Holy Temple Church of God in Christ. Yes. And you said that there was no movies, no secular music, no dancing, and that food mm. was your only indulgence. Yes. Is that why you have such a strong connection to food? We would go to church probably five, six times a week. Dang. But it was everything we had to do because it was our entertainment, it was mm. our lessons, it was everything. Mm -hmm. But then we would go late. I remember being a kid. There was a supper club called Wally's. Mm. Okay. And dude, there would be a huge spread out at literally 11.45 p.m. Jeez. And you hamburgers, hot dogs, blah, 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 blah. and Wally's was kind of like this, uh, it was basically like a cheesecake factory-ish. <laughs> so you could okay. have everything. And okay. dude, people would eat like champions. But especially when you're like depriving people of so many other things and that one thing becomes so, so, so important to you. Yeah. And you start like tethering that to positive emotions. And this is another thing. I was an artist and I was an athlete. But either world didn't accept me. So I would go to football practice and they would be like, hey man, you gotta quit all that paint stuff. Yeah. And then when I go to art class, like, hey, you gonna you gotta quit all that football stuff. And so I was like, why? Why? Dang, I, they I, did a lot. Think with either one either one. It sounds like you were always caught in this conflict between two worlds, right? Being like the artist and the athlete. Yeah. Growing up in this very uh heavy, heavy church and then not necessarily feeling the belief. Did you ever actually feel comfortable as a kid? No. Yeah. No. I was scared. Damn. I spent a lot of time very, very afraid. Growing up in the church that I did, the thing was, everything will send you to hell. <laughs> 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 so there is a the concept of the rapture. And the rapture is when Jesus come back and he's going to take the saints and it's going to disappear. And, mm -hmm. And the whole point was, you don't want to get caught and left behind, um, right? Yeah. So that was used as <laughs> you are not chosen, and just gone. I would just bawl my eyes out. A manipulative tool in a lot of ways to keep get kids grounded. They're like, hey man, Jesus is coming back, he's gonna catch you. That was almost like a boogeyman. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It was almost like, mm -hmm. and if you get left behind, oh my God, the world's gonna, the devil's gonna have you, and then and you were scared. Some kids straight. like Michael Myers, you had Jesus. Oh man, right, <laughs> right. And this is, a, and it's really wild because it doesn't. You're supposed to look at, mm. you know, religion and God is a good thing. Yeah. But I looked at it as like, oh my God, he's trying to catch me. Yeah. You know, so I spent all my time scared. Let me tell you, one time, when I was in church and I fell asleep. And I'll never forget. I woke. I already know how that's about to go. The pastor's sitting in his face. You think you can sleep in the Lord's house? It's like, we've been up all day. Why are you so spazzed out? You know, the Lord designed all of us. And resting is a part of us, right? So you're crashing out on me for doing something that he designed in my body. <laughs> like. Woke up. And all the pews were empty. And everyone was gone. No. And I went, no! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, he thought he was in the... Oh, my goodness. That is not funny. That is not funny. He thought he was in the rapture, bro. He thought everybody left. Oh, listen. I'm a kid, man. I'm, I'm, you gotta understand. This is the way they kept us straight. And I went, no, I missed it. I missed it. It happened. And I'm gone. And dude, I'm screaming like, no, no. And I'm running. And no one's anywhere. Everyone was in the basement eating. <laughs> Everyone was in the basement. And my mother was like, I'm right here, I'm right here. And I was like, oh my God, I thought you were gone. I thought everybody was gone. That's still, that memory right now, mm. it's like it happened yesterday. Yeah. That's how pivotal That's not funny. it was. Like, I couldn't remember. It was just I would, I would, because cause it's not like, Oh, you just lost your parents, or you know, oh, you 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 know something simple. It's like, nigga, you lost life. There, there's no you. You're cooked. Yeah. And I spent so much time afraid. And then Charles Manson was out. The whole Charles Manson thing. They yeah, were like, Jesus he's got a frog on his head. He can, he can open doors with his eyes. I believed it all. Yeah. I believed it all. And it was crazy because I remember Helter Skelter was the movie that was out mm -hmm. on television. And I was like, and I was so scared that Charles Manson was going to come kill me. You know, you know, not, not only Jesus, but Charles Manson, because Charles Manson looked like Jesus. Yeah. Which was kind of crazy. So I got them all conflated together. Yeah. It's so easy to laugh at now, but also at the time, like. I'm a kid. You're dude. a kid, yeah. I'm a child. And when you talk this kind of stuff, you have to explain yourself. Hmm. But there was not a lot of explanation. I mean, like, this is our therapy session for the day, Josh. <laughs> he just, yeah, not gonna lie, son, you're gonna die if you don't believe in Jesus. It's just like, and he's like three. Son don't even know what's happening. He just, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what are you going on? I'm here crying over, over our last meal, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Listen, man, we that's, got that's trim. Charles Manson works, can't so. hurt you. No, it's over. Terry, for course number Man, two, we got you, the... Is that ribs and cornbread? Oh, my God. That looks so bomb. Yo. Baby back ribs right here. A little bit of pickled veg on the side. A cornbread muffin, some extra sauce. We got the barbecue baked beans. Then, of course, some collard greens cooked down with some smoked turkey neck in there. Oh. 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 oh this is I'm going in. I'm going in. Man. I'm going to add some of these beans Can't right not. here. <laughs> This is one of my childhood favorite meals. You have Wait, to understand why. Like Again, we go, we're, we're going back to the Midwest, mm. okay? And by going back to the Midwest, we have to talk about a theme oh, park called they Cedar Point. Them. I was like, why is he just eating Anybody who knows about Cedar Point. Ooh, I heard, I heard, I heard that. I heard that. Woo! The studio audience is live today. See, listen, Cedar Point is the bomb, right? Because we were so far from Disneyland, you ain't getting there. So far from Disney World, no way. And nothing, oh, look at the sauce, man. Oh, man. my God. Nothing like, mm. My uncle, oh, my God, this is so rare. Oh, God, fam. You know, everybody in every... <laughs> man, I want some ribs, bro. I'm sick. I'm sick. Family had a resident barbecue expert. Mm -hmm. So he would come by the day before, knowing we were going to see the point. And he would... Barbecue these ribs. He has a special. I shouldn't be watching this, and I'm hungry. Like sauce. It's hurt. Smoke, smoke this sauce. The whole thing. And my aunt will make the side. 
She had the baked beans, she had the greens, she had the cornbread. The whole plan was never to buy food in the park. Yeah, yep. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we already knew. Ain't good. Don't ask, because we ain't paying for none of that. We bought the tickets. And so and we bought those on coupons. <laughs> hey, and I remember- drinking out of the water fountain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Right, right. Yep. And it was like, no, I, whatever you see out here, don't worry about it, because we bring in the food. And man, it was so, it was one of the best memories ever like no church no no it was yeah. like fun 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 all the coasters all the rides mm -hmm. and then the family would all get together by between noon and one we break this out um <laughs> i had a cedar point t-shirt man no and difference. i'll never forget the day i ruined it because my uncle asked me to move the grill after he done cooking because we're going the next day and i, and I kept the freaking t-shirt on <laughs> because I was going to wake up in it mm -hmm. so I could just jump in the car. And I put the the grill next to my shirt and I put <laughs> it down and it has all these sauce lines all over it. I was like, no! And you can't get barbecue sauce out of a, That's done. a white Cedar Point t-shirt. That shirt's called a rag now. Yeah, it was, right, exactly. <laughs> That's obviously such like an incredible happy memory from childhood. And it's always when you wear like the cleanest fit too. It's where all the sauce is just like extra spillable it's like plus five on all their stats <laughs> it's like what bro also you say that you were sort of constantly scared and you felt powerless how do you like hold those two truths at the same time like do you ever feel yourself getting so negatively tinged by your childhood that sort of ruins the positive memories it's the sin of comparison yeah when you're comparing yourself to other people you go oh man i didn't know it was bad but when you're young you don't know you're poor yeah I wasn't allowed to do anything. Like, I wasn't allowed to play sports, wasn't allowed to go to the movies or anything like that, but I was allowed to draw. And mm -hmm. what I would do is sit in my room and people would tell me about movies. And then I would draw what I thought the movies were. Did you make? God damn. God damn. Damn, man, all glory to God, because, whoo. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to do anything. Like, I wasn't allowed to play sports. I wasn't allowed to go to the movies hey, or anything like that. That is, like, that is frying me. He didn't even get to watch the movie. He had to see, nah, that, bro. But I was allowed to draw. And mm -hmm. mm, what I would do. I sit in my room and people would tell me about movies and then I would draw what I thought the movies were. Did you make accurate predictions? No. <laughs> <laughs> they were all over the place, right? Damn. That is like killing me. No way. So you couldn't just watch it. He had to sit. I would literally make movie posters and do all this. I'll never forget because I wasn't allowed to see it, but I love it. And when I finally did see it, it was phenomenal. It was Alien. Because mm. Alien came out around 1979, around that time. And I just remember the commercial and I was like, oh my God. So I started drawing what I thought the alien looked like because I didn't know. Mm. People, my mother was very disturbed. She's like, that's some demons in there. Like, <laughs> and uh, people in school were like, Derek, what's wrong with you? You know, I had a lot of blood and weird stuff in there, but I was like, this is what the movie is, right? And I was, I'm, again, I'm a biggest nerd you could ever imagine just because of my imagination. It forced me mm -hmm. to imagine everything. Uh, also, like, I don't think it's corny to be really excited about things. I think that's something that a lot of, especially young people are taught that it's corny to be excited, but I don't think it is at all. Yeah, I also like want to talk about the child. idea of like those hardships actually nah, spurring to someone towards success, God, yes. which just like, of course can be true. Yes. But then there's a flip side <laughs> like, of that, bro. of you still feeling like you have those hardships after you've reached the success. Yeah. So like, yeah. how do you actually learn how to enjoy that? I just wasn't thankful for what I had. It was always like, yeah, but I'm, I'm not there. I, I, I'm not there when I get there. Was that just overcompensating for you thinking that you like needed to have that wall up? I think it was. And, and, and I'm not there now. And once we, we rebuilt our marriage, I started to understand like, oh wow, you have to enjoy this stuff while it's here. Yeah. So as the kids started getting older and moving out, I was like, oh, I think I missed the time with them. Like the, the first one's gone and the second one started leaving and then the third one's gone and you go, yeah. 
oh my God, like, I don't know if I really enjoyed while they were here. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a scary feeling. Especially because you probably convinced yourself that it was for them when you probably knew damn well it was it was for oh, me. Okay. They knew it was for me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? That yeah. was the thing. They were like, okay, yeah, sure, Dad. Somebody got to pay for all this, you know, that kind of thing. But they're like, we just wanted to be with you. Yeah. Like, we didn't care what it was. Because, again, it's the sin of comparison again. You know what I mean? Like, when I was a kid, I didn't have this. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give you all these things. But they're like, but, Dad, we just want you. Yeah. I was like, oh, wait a minute. And that took some years, dude. And my wife was always telling me the whole time, like, you need to just chill and you need to be with them. But I was always explaining to her, no, no, but what happened if we don't have this? She said, we'll be fine. Yeah. She's a smart lady, man. That's one reason why I'm still here. I'd be dead without her. I ain't gonna lie to you. Hey, right man, now. cheers to having smart women in our lives. That's it, man. Day. That's uh, it. Hey. That's it. <laughs> Today for our course number three, healthy interlude, we have the grilled broccolini with a grilled bison ribeye. Fin- Don't do that shit ever again, please. It, it, all right, bro, we get it. <laughs> like, Finish with a little bit of grass-fed butter. We got the baked sweet potato, and then we have a panoply of smoothies. We have the peanut butter, we have the berry, we have the citrus, and then we have the strawberry. And look at them dance. No, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. My muscles are talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hear myself. I was staring. First of all, Josh, Josh, this. Freak ass. Don't say that shit to me. I was staring. It's like. You have to understand something about this. This meal is my first, like, staple, official, like, I'm I'm going to get healthy meal. Mm. Okay? This is bison. But I found the less processed this meat was, the better it was for you. You know what I mean? And it was so rich and iron and. Oh, they first time I ever had it, I'll never forget it was like a Santa Fe, New Mexico, an old thing, and it was just like, oh my God, this meat is so good. Oh, oh, and it's done perfectly. You turn it's, like, it's hard to man. burn it. Yeah. Because it's all. It's so good. Oh, oh, and it's done perfectly. You turn it's, it's, like, it's hard to man. burn it. Yeah. Because it's always. I beg your pardon. What? Don't, don't. Stay, just, look at that. It always stays. You try to like casually slide that in there. When I retired from NFL, I got tremendously out of shape because as a football player, that was my whole life. I retired. We moved to LA. I was like, I'm gonna try to get into the, the industry and the whole thing. But I was so depressed. I used to just sit on the couch and eat pecan sandies. That was my thing, man. Oh, it's the worst. Like they're each dry one of, too, man. Oh yeah, with a big glass of milk. Nice. But they're so dry. And I gained 50 pounds overweight. I mean, I was like, and my wife came up behind me. And she was in the mirror, and mm-hmm. she pinched my back back. Like, whoa. And I was like, whoa, what are you doing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And she was like, oh no, it's okay. It's just cute. It's cute. I was like, what? Do you, thank you. What are you talking about? Don't, what do you? T- don't touch me like that. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, like, I had no, no read because I had still seen myself like this super fit mm. guy. And she was like, it's cute. I love you anyway. I was like, don't stop playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, angry. Call, yeah. Angry. Out, and she bro. was like, damn. So just calm down, right? Went to the gym. <clears throat> and I told the guy at the, at the counter, I was like, I'm going to work out here. He goes, great. That'll be uh, $100. And then it's like a... Twenty dollars a month. I said, No, no, no. You don't understand. I'm gonna work out here. He said, Yeah. You have to understand, Josh. I never paid to work out. Yeah. In my life. In my life. Yeah. Literally, from high school all the way up to college to the pros, you just go to the gym. And I'm like, Oh, oh, okay. Because I'm sitting here like, You're okay. You're gonna work out here. Is it still a hundred dollars? You paying? Like you want me to pay? And I hit me. I was like, I have to pay. So I paid. And then I went and got on a recumbent bike and read a magazine. And, and like in literally ten minutes. And then I put it down and went home. You gotta do your baby steps, baby, baby, just little bitty things. And I also got into smoothies during this time. You know what I mean? I feel like smoothies were new back then. Too. Yeah. We didn't always have smoothies. Dude, there was no Jamba Juice. You know what I mean? This is all brand new. I remember people were like, smooth. Jamba Jungle Juice. Super. 
it's like I don't want all Please, that. Bro. This is the way you can get your calories in and have your protein yeah. and do it. It's a meal and it's a drink. That's how old I am. Because <laughs> people didn't smooth. There, there was no smoothie. It was like either ice cream yeah. or water. You that were riding like, a horse to the gym. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what the? <laughs> so, and let me taste this one. Mm. Mm. He said, and you were riding a horse to the gym. It's like, it's like, no. <clears throat> peanut butter. Oh. I love peanut butter, man. Got a little Greek yogurt in there. Whoa, too. with the Greek yogurt, dude, dude. Look at that. I feel the muscles just building. Look, you know, look at that. Gotta really cut. That's that. Oh, oh there you go, guys. No, you got, got, it. No, you got <laughs> it. Dude, this is some healthy fat, healthy Damn. protein. Yeah. The Greek yogurt is great pro, uh, probiotic. Mm. Uh, mm. I want to ask you about how you first started working out, though, because you were 11 years old, and you said you'd be doing crunches so obsessively that your stomach started to cramp. Yep. A lot of people might start working out to get dates, but you were working out to kill your father. Yeah. Very different. Very. Listen, my. I forgot that was a thing. And that just took a turn. Why did we just like, and then there's all this nice happy music in the back, and he, he just changed the whole energy of the whole thing. I'm like, yeah, I forgot that was a thing, bro. There it is. Now I remember. My father was very abusive. Mm. One of my earliest memories of was him knocking my mother out. Dang. I was at five years old. He worked in a factory, and he worked all day. And we would go, I remember leaving at one. He would work second shift. We'd leave at one, he would come home around 11 after his night at the bar. Mm. And man, they would fight. And my mother was screaming, and he, you know, haul off, and don't make me do this, don't make me, and then pow! And then he, I would never forget walking out and seeing her on the ground, knocked out. He's like, look what you made me do. And so I looked at him, and I'm mm. going, oh, boy, okay. Remember, as a young man, you start to realize there's certain things you just start to get immediately. I'm like, this is your world. You can do that to her. You say you love her. You say you love me, too. But, dude, you just did that to her? Well, I mean, that's a grown woman. Yeah. What are you going to do to me? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, man, it's your world, brother. Like, I just didn't want to get that punch. Because you got to understand, my father, yeah. the way he walked around the house, it was like, boom, boom. It was like Godzilla. And I remember on the news, you know, because the news And you was, know what's crazy? He has, he has such a warming and, like, nice, like, energy right now. But I know it was a whole different type of thing in that situation. He, <laughs> he was probably, not, man, that's, it's not even it's just like, it's not even funny. He just knew like, it was only the big stuff that got on, you know, it wasn't like 24 crazy. hour news. So he, it was like, man kills entire family. I was like, my father could do that. He could do that. Yeah. Did you think could or would? It was a little bit of both. Yeah. Some mm. days it would be like, would he? And, but he definitely was could he. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The question, no, no question he could. So I was like, all right, I got to protect my mother and I got to protect myself. So as a little kid, man, I was out there. I literally, we had, this That's was back sad. in the day. And there, at the end of, one thing they, my parents did let me do was comic books. Mm. At the end of the comic books, they would have these little books about, I was tired of getting sand kicked in your face. <laughs> it was a little cartoon that was like, and it would show a guy at the beach getting his sand. And it's a little workout number where you could get, um, learn how to get muscles. Man, the pre-internet days. It was that little thing. And we, me and my brother, wrote, we wrote the little, um, the little address they had on there. And I think it was like you had to send like a dollar or something. I put a dollar in the envelope. And we got this book back that had these drawings of exercises. Like, this is how hard it was. There how was, many, do you there was no the gyms exercises? back then. I remember. How the, old is he? <laughs> they have gyms. He couldn't go to no mood, no nothing. They have smoothies. Dang. What? How old is, nah, bro. Fifty six. Okay. No. A little cartoon that was like, and it would show a guy at the beach getting this thing. It's a, and it's a little workout. Put a dollar in the envelope, and we got this book back that had these drawings of exercises. 
Like this is how hard it was. There how was, many? Do you there was no the gyms back then. I remember the exercises were, and this is dynamic tension, right? Those kind, they would draw how you sit against the wall, and this is, and we and my and brother. How much money like, you pay? <laughs> <laughs> like a buck, right? But your leg, but but yeah, buck back then was like yeah. ten dollars. Now yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, like twenty dollars now. To be honest, I said if if this works doing it once, it's got to work better doing it four times. Yeah. <laughs> so what I would do was just keep doing it over and over. And then I learned about dynamic tension with the Bruce Lee book. And then so I was like, I'm going to tense up to the point where, and then all of a sudden, big things would cramp and muscles would go, oh, oh, this is why you get the peak on top of the peak. Because I was like, ah! And I, my mother was like, what is going on? <laughs> but fitness, it was one of my things. So you just tense up your arm like this and then keep, doing it and then keep doing it was because i did feel like i had to protect my family yeah i did feel like I had it was to for good family. reason but and uh let me tell you man it it kind of came to a head when i actually did a sad like reason father, but mm. a good reason but i was a grown man yeah and um it was kind of wild because he who he uh in my first re real year in acting and he hit my mother in the face mm. when we were me and my wife were headed to detroit to go and uh, visit some friends and I get a call from my aunt, the same aunt that would take us to Cedar Point and the whole thing with my uncle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh my God. She said, your, your dad just hit your mom. Mm. And I said, what? And I was, I said, I'm a grown man, but I'm a grown ass man now. Like, yeah. and this is the thing, when I went home for Christmas. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. He kind of like, you still would try that and you see how I am now and you're still like, you still got the, the guts, the balls to do that? Are you crazy? Call yeah, I Christmas crashed. From hell. Christmas from hell. So I, I said, dude, I told him never to mess up. I said, dude, I, just don't trip because my kids hadn't been around it. Mm. And knew my kids were shook. Like they never seen that. Yeah. All in this. So I told him, get everybody out of the house. And it was just me and him. And I beat his ass for hours. And I felt nothing. Did you expect to feel something? Like, did you actually think that moment would lead to any sort of? Hey, man, this is it. This, this is the moment. This is yeah. what I trained for. This is what I wanted. This is like what I. Damn, bro. This, I was like, how does it feel? How does it mm -hmm. feel? And man, I felt nothing. Like a man is never ever meant to hurt his parents. Yeah. No matter what they did. Now, now I'm no better than you. Like, where does it, when did, like, there's no awards, yeah. there's no medals. Yeah. There's no winners here. Yeah. And I left, and I never went back for 10 years. Yeah. 10 years. But this, there is a kind of a, a nice end to this, because once I went to therapy, after my wife and I broke up and the whole thing, and I went to therapy for the first time. In my therapy, I discovered that I needed to com just address what happened. Mm -hmm. But the way I had to do it, I had to find one thing that I was thankful for him for. And so I called him up and I said, man, I said, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that you had me. Because if you didn't have me, I wouldn't exist. Yeah. That's a fact. And he yeah. said, he cried. He apologized. He was like, I'm sorry for what I did to you and your mom and the whole thing. Now, at the time, it was a wonderful moment when I realized how I could really be free was really forgiveness. And I God going to do it every time. <laughs> he going to do it every time. Sense, man, it's a, whew, that's a deep memory, man. But it's amazing how food can take you. There. <laughs> you know no, what truly, I mean? Man, yeah, it's got like real, real deep, bro. Over over some sixteen ounce steak, I'm sick. <laughs> Appreciate you telling that. Story oh no, I, it's, it's it's important. Yeah. I think, especially guys like me who are in the fitness and in these things, there's a reason why you're doing this. Yeah, I had a lot of insecurities, man. I was yeah. scared. No, there's a, a deep pain that generally comes from it. Oh. And the want to be powerful only comes from the feeling of powerlessness that you started with. Totally. And it started to hit me, man. I was like, oh, and I can deal with these things in the right way. Yeah. Oh, man, it's good. Mm. What is this, banana pudding? 
It's like, like, why? Why he shattered a cup? So good, man. So great. Terry, we're moving into the more avant-garde section. Yes! We got the zucchini yes. flan, we got the gazpacho what? with a little bit of crostina, we got crispy mashed that? potatoes, and then piri-piri chicken. Yes. Betty, Betty Sir, chicken. tell me about it. Okay, this is this, this is my- This all looks great. A world experience, okay? This is one of the things, my, uh, my wife and I, we had the gazpacho in Italy. Once I started to travel for real, I'll never forget, uh, uh, my first movie was a movie called The Sixth Day with Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, look at that. That cold, so fresh, spot, right? Just so mm. fresh with the crostini. Mm, mm, mm. Terry, stop with the smoothies and start drinking gazpacho. I know, I know. That's man. the deal. Mm. Just the idea of cold soup. I was like, huh? <laughs> what? And then I had it. Okay. And I was like, my life has changed forever. And then uh, the peri peri chicken. I like the music. We, we yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. Flame grilled. It's like a special thing. And it, you know, the, the place they have is Nando's, is yep. what they call it Nando's. There's Nando's, is, and then now there's like 15 different imitators. They got yeah. Bandos, they got Mandos. Oh, that's good. But this is that flavor. Remember Kukuru? I do remember. remember I grew up on Kukuru, man. Dude, I, I will go to Kukuru. I remember Kukuru. Probably four times a week. Yeah. That was a necessary thing, and then it went out of business. Then the zucchini flan. Me and my wife went on our 34th anniversary last year. That's and we beautiful. went to the south of France, and we had a chef, and he made zucchini flan. Now, I, I, the only way I had seen flan was like as a dessert. Yeah. Mm. Did we get it right? Because we had no idea what you were talking about. Yeah, this is good. Flan. No, <laughs> this is good. I Actually, said, oh my God, the mm, back. No the fuck you didn't. Shatters his plate. It's like, <laughs> he could have just said no. He's like, he could have just said no. So, no, nah, I had to make my point. That you could make this mm. as a side dish. It's just so beautiful. And then we go into the smashed potatoes right here, man. One of my smashed New York spots. Smashed potatoes. Um, quality meats, and they have the best potatoes in the world. And I love these smashed skillet mm. potatoes. This is the indulgent meal. This is when you're like, mm -hmm. we going big, and we going we or we or we ain't going home. You know what I mean? I thought the ribs would have been that. That would have been my like. Indulge, yeah, like real, yeah. You give me a fat rack of ribs. I, man, what? Oh, I want to talk to you about power and like what it actually means because you're obviously very powerful in stature. You speak very powerfully. You have a very powerful on-screen presence. You wrote a book about finding your true power. What are the things that people get wrong about it? The phrase I like to use is, "You telling everyone what to do does not make you the boss." Mm. You doing everything you told yourself to do mm. makes you the boss. Yeah, power is internal. Yeah. The whole thing is pointing the fingers at everybody else and never doing what they say they're going to do. Yeah, and that's where everybody gets caught because they go, "Hey, you just said to do this and you don't do it. Mm. You tell people to be on time, and yet you're never on time." Yeah, the difference between some people is they <laughs> feel like, well, they can hey. say. I had no choice. I think Terry Crews and like The Rock are like the only two celebrities I've seen where they're just casually relaxed and their veins are just like pulsing through their head. It's like yeah. I had no choice. <laughs> you know, what? I, I, it was, I had to do this. I had to do that. I will never ever say that on my dying day. If you put a gun to my head, I have a choice. Actually, that day, lucky for you, is today. And he's like, he's like, it's called your last film for a reason. This isn't going on YouTube. It's like, it's going on Twitter. This is last meals. You're done. I have a choice. The choice is, am I going to live or am I going to die? On but it's You're still a choice. Yeah. Acknowledge it's your like, life is your choice. You see what I mean? That changed for me. Because there was this whole time when I was a victim. So things start to come from your choices. There's a choice on how I can deal with certain things. There's a choice if you get slighted. There's a choice on how you can handle these things. You can go off and uh, feel like a victim, or you can say, you know what? They're wrong. I choose the higher ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do it. Change my life forever. That's power. Mm -hmm. That's true power. It's not about anybody else. It's about me. It's about m my world, me controlling everything about myself. Yeah. And you have a great story about 
Perry Perry Chicken when you were shooting in South Africa with Blended, where the original pitch for that that Adam Sandler wrote, that funny. the character was like really Betty disrespectful towards that culture, and, 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 and you were faced like, with a choice at that okay. moment, right? Dude, I had to. First of all, the way it was written, I was like, Adam, hey man, can I talk to you? And he was like, Yeah, sure, buddy. You know, man. Okay. man, we're gonna be in trouble if I do this the way this is. I said, No. I can't, first of all, I'm not going to do it that way. Yeah. So are you open to ideas that I have? So it was very stereotypical and weird and disrespectful to African culture. And then I decided, okay, let's make this guy like the Don Ho of the place. Let's give him suits. Let's give him, let's not, let's, let's laugh with him and yeah. not at him. Let's not laugh at the culture. Let's all of us laugh together. And it changed the whole dynamic of the movie. And I was so thankful that he let me do that yeah. because there are times when, you know, other movies and other projects, they go, nope, that's the way it is. Sorry, buddy. And then when you shed that responsibility and you make the choice, you said you didn't have a choice within, then yep. you feel shame about that. Mm -hmm. and then you blame other people. So it just mm -hmm. creates this whirlpool of shame where you're like diving down. But it sounds like you're taking like radical accountability for everything in your life. And I think that freaking rules, man. You know, it took me a while to get to that thing. Mm -hmm. And it was a really a bounce through, you know what I mean? But I'm so thankful I made it through this pop. Because I didn't stop. Yeah. And I didn't give up. Very hard to do. Mm. Okay, ready at course number five? Let's do it. Of course we'll be on. I know. Where are we? I think. Oh my God. I think when you were six years old, the rapture did come. <laughs> this is either heaven or hell, and I can't. This is hell. <laughs> this is hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. I would not have been laughing. I'm like, yo, <laughs> don't, 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 don't play with me. Hell, <laughs> you, go, you, you gonna go to sleep tonight with hot flashes? Just <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, Terry, relax. Terry, Terry, Terry relax. Course, number five in your meal Easy from hell. There. We have the garlic bread. <laughs> we have the Caesar salad, hand torn croutons, and then we have the frittata affogato. Affogato, affogato. As a kid, I forgot. What comes second, very, very closely second, and almost went to the top. The top was pizza. Mm. Pizza, bro. Like pizza I could eat so two pizza. large pizzas with everything all. My so can I. So can I. So can I. My own. When my father, he was a big gambler, right? Mm. Oh, oh my God! Camera so gambler. He was a big gambler. So you know, you you normally lose more than you win. Mm. But occasionally he would win and he would come home and it was one of the happiest days of my life. Meaning he would have money, he would, he would wake us all up. Oh, let me get some of this garlic bread. Mm. Please, man. Mm. We combine this all, it just turns into pizza. Oh. Nah, he should have just, you know what he should have did? Put the garlic bread as the croutons for the Caesar salad. Hey, big backing has levels. <laughs> oh, no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he would bring home two large pizzas, and we would be up at midnight, and we'd be eating that pizza, and he'd be stacking his money on the table, and my mother, and the, now listen, my mother and father, that's the first time I ever saw them kiss. Really? Like, in love. And I was going, whoa. Like, that, yeah. that's just like on TV, is what I was saying in my head. Yeah. Oh, that's a magical moment, bro. He like, we got pizza. My parents are happy. He got money. We're, oh, that's that's tough. I realize because I mean I would live on pizza in college and whole thing, but you realize, oh my god, I can't eat pizza all the time. Yeah. Because you're like, <laughs> oh my god, I'm getting I'm gaining weight and whole thing. This frittata changed my life. It's the high protein pizza. Because it's 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 the flavors are all there, but instead of a bready crust, it's egg. Yeah. And the frittata. If you gotta have a little bread and little things and really cut up, you get the garlic bread right in there. <laughs> oh my god! And the Caesar salad, classic. More cheese, Classy. more cheese. But vegetables, it's yeah. good for it's you. Veggies, man. It's lettuce. Mmm. Mmm. I don't see no dressing. Your mom was a big sweepstakes, all right? Mm -hmm. So it was like that you got a lot of your morality from movies because everywhere you looked around yourself as a kid, you're like, well, I know what Elder Jones is doing behind the church, so I oh can't get it from there. Yep. What movie do you think had the strongest impression on your moral code as an adult? Mm. You know that's what? a good question. That is a, that's, that, yo, I ain't never heard no question like that. That is a good Star question. Wars. Yeah. Star Wars. Because it was about evil, it was about good. And I'll never forget, like, even with Empire Strikes Back, and it was almost like finding the goodness in things that you wouldn't find. Like, Yoda was a joke at first. 
Mm-hmm. You thought Yoda was a cartoon character. You're like, oh, he's cute, he's silly, he's silly. He was the wisest one. Mm-hmm. When Yoda got in his power, when Luke's ship is, is, is all bogged in the swamp, and then Yoda sticks his three fingers out there, and it raises up. Mm-hmm. I get emotional now, dude. Yeah. I get emotional about that because it's like, not gonna lie. I just don't like Star Wars, but you know, I know people do. That's cool. Star Wars. Star Wars is me. And look at his power. <laughs> and you start to Somebody learn be about upset. being good. And, <laughs> what, you know, you didn't really die. I get choked up because it's like, I truly believe in my heart that no one ever really dies. Our spirits are never dead. Our spirits have always been here. Mm-hmm. So we just move to another state, move to the mm-hmm. next thing. and it's get, it, That's kind of how I think about it, too. I don't think it's never like a... I think it's just kind of like, all right, stage one, that's where you're going to be at. And then you live that, whatever. And then now you move on to the next stage. And then who knows, there might be another stage. It, it supplants all that fear and scary, oh, what's going on, into a whole other thing for me. And again, not like Star Wars is real, but it gave me a lesson. And wait a minute, we are here. Yeah. When my mom passed away, I could feel her. You know what I mean? Was, I know she's proud of me. I know she's looking and she's watching. That's beautiful. And she's in a better place. And she knows more than ever now. You know what I mean? Because yeah. all has been revealed to her and we're all gonna eventually get there. So I don't fear moving to the next level. And I think Star Wars did a great job of just putting that morality in a picture so that we can understand it. But Star Wars has always, always been one of the major, major influences and it was the first movie that I ever got to see in a theater, like oh, a, a drive-in theater. And it changed my life forever. It, it gave me, it, I, I knew I was really? gonna be in the entertainment forever the first time I saw Star Wars. Uh, how Dang. important was it for you to repair Over your relationship the... with your mother? Because you finally confronted Over her that? about her abuse towards you. Because yeah. you had your father who never hit you. Yeah. You hit your mother and then your mother would pass that down to you and just well, break the cycle. It was, let me tell you, I learned to be a lot more gentle. With- <laughs> let me tell you this. He's like, grabs the table, table starts shaking. You just see him flexing all his body. He's like, let me tell you this. You're not going to bring up that anymore. Nah, but like, seriously, though. Because my mother did a lot to survive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there was a lot of anger that she took out on us. My mother would tell me, I hate your dad. I hate her. I wish he was dead. She used to say stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we'd be like, yeah, uh, can you pass the bread, please? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, thank you. Um, Sorry, mom, what, what are you? And she it's would like, be like, I hate him. Uh. And we'd be like, okay, but. And so that's why it was like, we knew she was mad. And we knew she was angry. Um, and then she would take it out on us sometimes. And so as an adult, and okay. after therapy, just like I had to confront my dad, I had to go to my mother. Yeah. I said, you know, with that. You know, the stuff you did, that wasn't right. And she said, oh, uh, I don't, I know. And she denied, she tried to deny it. And I was like, no, that happened. Yeah. And then finally she said, you know what? I, I'm sorry. And this is one thing I tell my kids, because mm-hmm. um, I didn't do everything perfect. You look back and you go, oh man, I wish I could redo that. I wish I could redo that. But this is a wonderful thing about life, that as an adult, I pass you your life, the deed to your life, but it comes as is, mm-hmm. like a house. Like if the basement's leaking, ah, uh, sorry about that, but it's your basement now. You know, oh man, the roof needed repairing. Oh, what happens okay. is everybody goes back to their parents and be like, this, this roof is leaking. So it's like, but now it's your chance to be the one to, you know, fix it. And, and the basement flooded. And you listen, you can talk all that you want. But the previous owner is done. You bought it. It's your life. No, so no, you- actually, wait, no, wait. No, I didn't buy nothing. They put me here. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not a good analogy. I ain't going front. I thought he was just saying, like, you know, you move in and it's kind of like, but that's still not a good analogy because I'm not buying no house with no broken basement. I'm not doing that. They, no, they put me here. Okay. Fix. It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. Same thing. Right. Listen, sad as all these things I've been talking about, I can't blame one 
thing in my life today that happens right now on my father or my mother. I am 100% responsible It's because of my choices. Yeah. It's me. And it helps because you go, if you don't like something, change it. Yeah. If you don't, uh, that is you true. don't have to be scared anymore. Yeah. It's over. Because yeah. if we were going to continue a relationship, I had to talk to her. Oh, I'm guessing, oh I guess he's saying as like a, as an adult. Okay, okay, no, 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 no. I get what he's saying. 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 Oh. And um, God bless. Has a kid. It's like I, I, I'm not. Oh no, no way. <laughs> no, but I do really, really good. Yeah, I said yes. Settlement, like just, just of all how we were gonna be, all the way until she passed. And it, I love her to this day, man. And I just, I'm, I'm very thankful. But I know. I was given a deed to my life as is. I can't I can't blame them for any of this stuff. It's a matter of just like, yo, it's up to me. To find, yeah. It's up to you to find out what the differences are and how to change those things that you need to correct. Yeah. And that's where I'm at. All right. Terry, as Woo! meat sweats rain upon us, we got the final course of your final meal, the classic double cheeseburger, a little bit of pickles, some special sauce, yes. American cheese on that squishy bun. We got the fresh french fries, and then we got a strawberry shake. Oh, oh my God, crazy. my God. Oh, thank so you, much. thank you. Mm. But now, let's talk about this. The shake's so good, your eyes cross a little bit. Oh, so good. You know, man? Oh, these hot fresh fries. And then the cheeseburger with the special sauce double. Uh-oh. Mm, mm, Uh-oh. Mm. If you won't get messy, you ain't eating it right. I remember spending my whole allowance going to get a cheeseburger, fries, and a shirt. Because, and I'm going to tell you this, and this is a real big, deep confession. Remember I told you my How mother... How much was you making? About 75. It's like... What? She cooked like she ate it. <laughs> <laughs> intentionally or intentionally there would be something boiling on the stove and you'd be like what is that like there's a bone sticking out of and oh, he wanted like one it of those. with rice and mm-hmm. she's like I remember he'd go to work at one and we would go there and he'd be like oh this is so horrible and then she'd make herself a whole nother meal at night for herself <laughs> I'm serious that's she'd be a long psychological game, and doing all that. I'm like oh, and then we wake up like, I smell something go back to bed shut up so I want a grilled cheese <laughs> What I would do, like, and when I, again, when I, got away, when I was a teen, and I could do lawns, we used to shovel snow, but there was a place down the street, and me and my best friend, and we would go get these double cheeseburgers, mm-hmm. fresh fries, and a shake. You know, it was like a mom-pop spot. I don't even remember the name of it, because mm-hmm. I know I ate good when I had a double cheeseburger. Yeah, I know that. Don't fries think. and a shake. I can no longer tell if you've died and we've gone to hell, or maybe I've died and gone to hell. Because Eric, Terry, I've eaten so much that I'm hallucinating that I'm eating mm. a cheeseburger with President Dwayne Elizondo, Mountain Dew, Herbert Camacho. <laughs> I'm freaking out a little bit. Um, a Monday Night Football, Chargers versus Colts. You hit a man so hard that you knocked yourself out, and mm. you said that while you were knocked out, that was the most peaceful you'd ever been, like you were back in the womb. It was wonderful. Do you think that's what death is going to be like? Yeah, I, this, I've never been high. I've never been drunk. I don't drink. Mm-hmm. Uh, no alcohol, no drugs. Never been high in my life. That was bliss. I remember because <laughs> your body just shuts down. Like, mm. I- <laughs> <laughs> oh, huh. yo. <laughs> I know you're going to explain it, but it's just funny. That was pure bliss. Your body. Turns completely off. Your heart stops working. All your organs, everything, everything in your body just powers off. And, you know, you might not wake back up, but you are gone. And it's like. I had, I remember just all of a sudden there's this huge shock and blinding light. Blow! You know, your whole world. Because you're already in a helmet. Mm-hmm. So you feel like you're in a car accident. You know what I mean? And then it was like. Mm-hmm. Like all the air. Like you're in you're in space. It's like shoop, all the yeah. oxygen is nowhere, and you're just floating. And there's no up, there's no down. And I was like, oh. And I'm just looking around. <laughs> looking around. And I was in a dream state, like immediately, right? But it felt like two weeks. It was actually 20 seconds, because then you lost all space and time. You've lost all contact with it, right? I get up, and all of a sudden I'm looking. I'm looking at the team. 
And I'm going, wow, what, what's the you mean? What's the you mean? And everybody's like, what are you talking about? And it's a horseshoe on the on the Indianapolis Colts helmet. And I'm like, are we in Utica? Easy mistake. Anybody could have made that. Are we in Utica? And, I, and, I, and then I started to panic because people were like, man, stop. And then I went, uh-oh. And they called him punt team. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, like, I think that's the that's my mind. That's my that's, yeah, that's what yeah, I felt. That the ring the sound still in ringing in your ears. It's it like, is Monday, 1994. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, wait a minute. I'm just waking up from my dream right now. <laughs> Jerry, I, hit him. He's got the know, ball. It's so funny. I, I might find out. I just wake up and all. <laughs> the cameraman, he just like spears him. Roman Ray spear. <laughs> just like. I was just All this joking. Whole, uh, the whole ho- Hollywood career was part of this whole <laughs> <I got. laughs> You're trapped uh, in a snow globe. Mm, I'm going to sign. They're yelling punt team. I know I'm on punt team. But I don't know what a punt is. <laughs> and I'm serious. Like, I start crying. Damn. It's emotional. Yeah. Because I know this is my job. I'm like, what's the punt, man? What is a punt? And they're like, oh, man, get off me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going crazy on the sideline, right? And they finally, I went in, and they start piecing my life together. Like they're like, okay, Terry, you're Terry Crews. You have a wife. And I'm like, yeah, I got a wife. Yeah, yeah, I know her. <laughs> I'm talking to the doctor like this. He's yeah. telling me, like, how many kids do you have? And I was like, oh, man. And finally, my memory came back, and they said, okay, you can play the rest of the game. See, this, there was no concussion protocol yeah. back in the day. You got your bell rung. No, I played the, right. Yeah. Wait, and it was hit of the week. I got the t-shirt. You get the t-shirt. Hit of the week. You know what I mean? And it's like, whoa, yeah. And you realize, oh my God. Now. Yeah, that's not really- that's not tough. That he almost lost his memories. I don't care. And then it was it really hit of the week. ESPN. It's like they believe being an actor, <laughs> performing, <laughs> saved my life. Because what happens is when athletes, especially athletes with head injuries, when they're done, they literally don't use their brain anymore. Yeah. And dude, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. And that's why a lot of NFL players have had really, really big problems. And I'll be honest, a lot of them die very, very young. Yeah. And I said, man, and I knew by using my brain and always pushing it, always forcing it into new levels, new things. Mm-hmm. It's it it helped. It helps yeah. help me survive. I think you actually died and went to the other plane and came back though. To be good, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, well, that's part of it. That's how I know there's more than this. Yeah. Jay, you ready for the lightning round? I'm ready. Who's the one person, dead or alive, you'd want to share your actual last meal with? Jesus. Uh, what song do you want yep. to be played at your funeral? A thousand miles. Oh man. God. <laughs> Yeah. That's my song now. That's my song. People know me by that. That's my song. I love you, Vanessa. Thank you. Uh, which The Killers Game co-star would you least want to face in Battle Dome's roller cage? Oh, my God. Dave Batista. All the Whoa. way, man. Uh, that's a tough some B right there, brother. You can yeah. sell the I love Dave. Got it, I love Dave. <laughs> What's your biggest fear? Getting everything I want and not having the energy to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like to have this opportunity and not having... And being too tired to go after it. Which NFL player's portrait are you the most proud of painting? Mm. Oh, Stan Humphreys. There was a guy named Stan Humphreys, quarterback with the Chargers. It was a beautiful painting, man. He went over his front, his mantelpiece, and the whole thing it was him standing over the city about to throw the ball. It was amazing. Incredible. That's mm. tough. Uh, what's the hardest goodbye you've ever had to say? To his mom. To my wife. Oh, okay. When. I was going to camp. I'll never forget when I was going to camp at the Redskins. Mm. That was really hard because I, I was missed her so much. I, I actually spent time in Germany doing all this, and I got to see her for a minute. And then I was pulled away again. I was like, oh, I just want to hold her. I want to be back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That was hard because yeah. we go away for a month and a half, and you're like, oh. Of all the characters you played, which one do you think deserves their own spinoff movie? Camacho. Oh, Dwayne Elizondo Mountain Dew Herbert Camacho put some respect on deserves his own movie, especially now, <laughs> especially now. <laughs>
<laughs> oh god, I think we're Reaped beyond parody. Last <laughs> uh, finally, Terry, are you happy? I am very, very happy. You seen I'm happy. so happy. Amen. I'm yeah, so that's thankful. gorgeous. I'm just so honored. And man, to go anywhere in the world and people know your name, but also that I still have my family. Yep. That I am a husband first, I am a dad. I truly have it all. You know what I'm saying? Which is which is wonderful. You know, my wife and I just celebrated our 35th anniversary. Dang. And it's beautiful, man. I mean, I think not a lot of people ask the question what it means to be a good man in the world right now. And you are asking a lot of that question, providing some good answers. So I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, Josh. Thank course, you, man. man. That and was I'm a full. good one, bro. <laughs> Same. I'm really full. <laughs> and I'm still doing it. I'm going all the way in. This, this is one of the best shakes I've ever had. You guys, I'm trying to tell all you. All right, man. man if you thought- enjoyed that video, make sure to check out another video like that. You know, just click it. Click it right here. You don't you don't got a sub or nothing, bro. I'm making it easy. Just just click the video. It's on your screen already. Might as well. Go ahead, click it.